Hey everyone, Jack Kiefer here, and in this video, I'm going to share with you how I remove the background from myself. So I'm just inserted into the video with no background, it's just me and my trusty chair. So, yes, this was a question that was asked by Linux Life just a couple days ago, and I thought that was a great question. So I'm going to go ahead and address this, and uh, this is how I do it anyway. Other people, you know, may have other methods, but this is how I do it. First of all, what you need to use for your background is to have a green screen. And so that's what I have in my background is a green screen. And I've seen people use pretty much all kinds of things for a green screen. You can have a professional green screen. You can have a blanket, a sheet, and it doesn't always necessarily have to be green. It just really needs to be a color that's different from what you would normally be wearing. Now the green screen, the shade of green that they use for those green screens, generally they use that color because it's a color that's not really going to match skin tones or your eye color, usually not clothes. That's one reason green screens are kind of the shade of green that they are. And so they really make a nice color. Now what I did was I purchased a green screen on Amazon and it cost me around $300. And it wasn't long after that I discovered that I could have bought it on eBay for way less. <laughs> and here's what I'm using actually. This is an eBay listing and this is what my green screen looks like. And it's just uh, really nice because it's collapsible. So it's just very convenient. And I just have this sitting right behind my chair. And then it kind of gives me all the greenness that I need. This one is about five feet wide and six and a half feet high. So it's pretty, pretty good size. And then when I don't need it, then I just hit the, I just press down on the top, kind of like this. And it just folds right up and it's neatly tucked away. So it's a really nice thing. And I left a link, by the way, down in the description in case you want to go over and take a look at it. So for me, this worked out really well because I don't really have to go hanging something above me and, you know, deal with racks and all this other stuff. Yes, that's my green screen. <laughs> all right. So how did I do this? First of all, what we want to do is we want to jump into OBS Studio. So I'll just go to my desktop here, click on this OBS Studio icon, and open this guy up. Now, what I'm using here is DroidCam OBS, which is a plugin for OBS Studio, but you don't have to use DroidCam. Actually, Media Source, I mean, not Media Source, Video Capture Device is just fine too. So if you're using a webcam or a built in cam, then just go ahead and use your video capture device. However, if you want to use DroidCam OBS, you can jump out to this website, which I have a link down below, and you can download this guy for your OBS Studio. One thing that's really important to note is when you download DroidCam OBS, firstly, you want to have it installed on your phone. So what DroidCam is, is this is something that allows you to use your phone as a webcam. I like using my iPhone. I have an iPhone. So DroidCam is available for iPhones and Android. So you can get it in the Google Play Store or from the iPhone, the App Store on Apple, as you can see here. And so you want to have it on your phone and then turn it on your phone first. And then we would install the plugin. Now, of course, if you don't want to use your phone, then uh, you don't have to go through all this. Actually, you can just skip this part. The reason I use my phone, I have a kind of a fancy, nice, HD webcam, and I also have a built-in cam in this computer. But my phone just seems to work the best with the green screen. Uh, really don't have to tweak anything. The phone just kind of compensates for everything. So I've gone ahead and downloaded this script, and I'm just going to extract it real quick. And once extracted into our folder, and Linux, we just run this install script. If you're a Windows user, it would just be an executable that you download. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy my location here and I'm going to change directories into there. And now I'm just going to run the install script, which would be sudo bash. 
install.sh. And then put in my password. I already had this plugin installed, but I wanted to just kind of run through the steps so you can see it in case you want to use this plugin. Okay, so that's that. So then after running that, when you launch OBS Studio, then you'll see the DroidCam OBS show up. Well, actually it won't be there. You need to go and add it, but you will see it here in the right hand selector here. And then you would just simply select that and then add it, which I've already done because I use it. <laughs> now, now um, just use the video capture device that you normally would use otherwise if you're not going to want to use your iPhone or your Android phone. So the video capture device, that works just the same for this. Uh, like I said, I just get a little bit better quality. I don't really have to tweak so much. So what we do is we go in here, if you look in your properties, okay, uh, here's where your IP is. And so when you run DroidCam on your phone, it's going to show an IP address and a port number. So you would just want to put those in here, your settings under properties. And then that way they'll match and then it will detect your phone. And as you can see right now, here's my green screen. And so the way I filtered that out is I went to filters and click add and select chroma key. So chroma key is really the, the key to all this pun totally intended. <laughs> and as you can see, it already took out my background. Uh, typically I'd have to tweak all this, uh, especially when I had my web was using my webcam. I had to get in here and kind of fine tune this. And yeah, that's me up there. That's actually my clone. He's working for me today and he looks just like me. Whoa, where'd he go? Okay, those were the opacity settings. These are all the different things and mainly what you would tweak are the similarity and the smoothness to get that background out. But these are all the other things you can tweak here, your brightness, gamma, contrast. But typically I've never really had to change any of this stuff. I'm just going to set those back to zero. But they're there in case you need it. And opacity, yeah, you probably wouldn't need to do that either. Typically, you want to remember similarity and smoothness. Okay, another thing I'd like to kind of point out here is your color, your background color. Maybe you're not using a standard green screen, or you might be using a different color screen in the background, or you might have like a green sheet or a blanket that's stretched out, which you want stretched out so there's as few wrinkles as possible. You can change your colors here. So maybe you have a blue background. Ah. <laughs> um, or you can go custom. This is typically what we would do is do a custom color here. And so let's say your green is just a little bit off. You're using green, but not standard green. I'm going to back that off a little. Then we can choose our color in here. First of all, let me go ahead and turn this off first. We want to turn off our chroma key when we pick a color. So let's jump in here again and I'll slide that over. So we can either choose preset colors here from our palette of basic colors, or you could, you know, select from your key color there for a wider variety, or we can pick our screen color. Just click that picker button, come over here, find a nice spot on your background and just click it. And then that'll give you a color that's tailored right to your background. And we would just adjust the similarity here and just bring it up. Oops, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me turn the chroma key back on. There we go. Wow, that's already pretty good. So we would just kind of tweak it here until it looks good. So for this color, it's so close that we can have a low number here because the background's very close. And then our smoothness we can bring up or maybe back off. Actually looks a little better backed off there. So yeah, not too bad. So if I go ahead and close that, it should work. And there it is, me with a custom color. So that's how you would do it with a custom color.
Also, let's see, it's a good idea. Well, hello to you too there, clone me. <laughs> All right, so let me just stick a background in here real quick. I'm gonna just hit my window capture so you can get a better look here at uh, how that's filtering out. So we'll just select this guy here, my web browser, hit OK. All right, and as you can see, it's pretty clean. Let me just resize this a little bit. All right, and you're doing a pretty good job there, Clone Jack. We're gonna adjust the camera, move that over. There we go. And it's as easy as that, easy peasy. Now let's go ahead and add a color filter. I recommend using a color filter along with your chroma key so you can get a better quality here. So here we open our color filter and hue shift, I guess is where you wanna start. So you can kind of tweak it. Uh oh, I look a little green. <laughs> and that's a little too red. So you just kind of find your spot here, your little balance. And then you can tweak other things like your saturation. If you want to back off the color or bring more in. Or just kind of find a nice balance in there. Uh, a lot of this is really just kind of using your own taste and judgment to see what goes on. So... You can kind of tweak it here. Your gamma is kind of like a brightness, but not really. <laughs> uh, maybe richness in your overall. Here's your brightness. And so you can tweak a little bit if you think it's a little too bright or not bright enough. Hmm, perfect. Well done there, clone me. Oh yes, now it's matching. So there's our color correction. And if you turn that off, you can see the difference. So yeah, much better with the correction on. Excellent. Okay, so let's put our window in the background again. That disappeared because of my editing. This was actually done in a different order. That's why you saw that disappear. Okay, and there you have it. Really, it's quite easy peasy not a hard thing at all for me you know the biggest challenge was just getting the green screen um, which you know I just ordered online and had it within a few days and I uh, was good to go uh, I have to say the biggest challenge though was probably figuring out how to do it <laughs> uh, I couldn't find a whole lot of information there was some you know but I had to kind of piece things together so that should cover it really and like I said this is the screen that I use. So if this is something that's handy, I left a link down below in the description. And as you can see, it's way less than what I paid for it. I paid like $300 for this screen and it's here on eBay for $118.99. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, I guess I paid too much, but hey, what the heck, as long as it works, that's what I really care about. So like I said, I hope this video was helpful. And if you liked it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.